Good afternoon, Assembly Member. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, today I'm presenting AB 861. Uh, in 2014, Congress enacted the Protecting Access to Medicare Act, uh, under which up to eight states will be selected to have their federal share of costs for outpatient behavioral health care for individuals with severe mental illnesses or se severe uh, and serious emotional disturbances increased to be equivalent to the enhanced federal matching rate for the Children's Health Insurance Program. The federal law would enable successful states to nearly double federal funds to support community mental health and substance use disorder services with no additional cost to the state or county. These are extremely important funds that California could use to serve some of its most vulnerable populations. Mr. Mullins, uh, AB 847, which you just heard, directs uh, the DHCS to apply for the federal planning grant uh, and my uh, bill AB 861 will ensure that if the state is successful in its bid that its application uh, will allocate a significant portion of the realized savings to provide housing assistance for people with severe mental illness. If California is successful it would benefit the state uh, to the tune of about two billion dollars. The savings to the counties would also free up Prop 63 funds and other county mental health funds that are now expended uh, on hospital care. These savings would then be redirective, redirected to supporting housing efforts. Uh, and I have with me uh, 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 Rusty Selix and others uh, to testify in support. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, Rusty Selix, California Council of Community Mental Health Agencies and Mental Health America of California. Support the bill. We think that's a very appropriate allocation of the funds that would be freed up and dealing with housing is our biggest challenge in, in dealing with people with severe mental illness. Thank you. Anyone else? Anna Hasselblad uh, with the Steinberg Institute, echoing Rusty's comments and strong support of this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Linda Way with Western Center on Law and Poverty in support of providing supportive housing. Chair Member Sean South, California Primary Care Association, in support. Thank you. Uh, opposition. Any comments from any of the members? Move we have the, moved the bill by Senator Mani. Seeing no other comments, we have a motion. Uh, it's, would you like to close? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Members respectfully request an I vote. Thank you. So we're item number seven, AB 861, due pass to appropriations. Call the members. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Wynn. Aye. Wynn, aye. Hall. Hall I. Mitchell. Aye. Mitchell I. Monning. Aye. Monning I. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen I. Pan. Roth. Aye. Roth I. Wolk. Wolk I. Eight. Currently has eight. Enough to get out. We will put that bill on call. I think we have one more absent member. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, can we call some members? Other members, yeah. Let, let's go ahead and open the roll uh, for all the bills. So if anybody's missed, we're going to start at the top. Uh, item number two, AB 386, current vote count is seven to zero. Call the absent members. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, I Pan. Currently has eight. We'll put that bill on call. Uh, consent calendar, item number three, four, and six. Call the absent members. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, aye. It's currently eight. Put that bill on call. Item number five, AB 847. Mullen, current vote count is seven zero. Call the absent members. Nielsen. Nielsen, I. Pan. Place that bill and call. Item number six, AB 858. Wood, current vote count is four to zero. Call the absent members. Hall. Aye. Hall, I. Mitchell. Aye. Mitchell, I. Monning. Aye. Monning, I. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, I. Pan. Current vote count is 8-0. We'll place that bill on call. What's seven? 
Seven, please. Item number seven, AB 861. Current vote count is eight zero. Call the absent members. Pan. Place that bill on call. Item number eight, AB 1231. Wood. Current vote count is five zero. Call the absent members. Hall. Aye. Hall, aye. Mitchell. Aye. Mitchell, aye. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, aye. Pan. Current vote count eight to zero. We'll place that bill on call. Uh, I, we saw Assemblymember Burke, and we're at item number nine, AB 1261, Community Based Adult Services, Adult Day Health Care Centers. Good afternoon, Assemblymember. Mayor and Senators. All of us want to remain in our own homes and communities as we get older, and every day adult health care centers help thousands of frail Californians do just that. Unfortunately, after nearly a decade of instability, programs across the state have closed their doors, leaving individuals with few choices for care outside of a nursing home. In my district alone, four centers have closed, leaving 420 of my constituents without the care that they had relied upon. AB 1261 provides some stability to our remaining providers in the community-based adult services program. The bill aligns state law with the bridge to, perform, bridge to reform waiver that currently governs adult day health care in California and requires Medi-Cal managed care plans to reimburse contracted providers at the rate that is no less than the Medi-Cal fee-for-service rates. I'm hoping that one day we'll be able to restore the program to its full capacity so that every one of our constituents has access to the care, that care that they need to remain healthy and independent. Until then, let's do what we can to stabilize the program and preserve the benefits. I respectfully request an I vote. Thank you. Anyone like to speak in support of the measure? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members. My name is Daisy Absalon. I'm a registered nurse and executive director of Escaton Adult Day Health Center here in Carmichael. Um, in behalf of California Association of Adult Day Services, I'm here before you. Um, we are proud to sponsor AB 1261, which would restore the community-based adult services program in state law. Um, it has existed, existed there for 30 years prior to its elimination in 2011, and then salvaged by a lawsuit and then recreated as a managed care benefit. Um, Community-Based Adult Services, or CBAS, is a medical program serving about uh, 30,000 elders and adults um, with chronic uh, functional disabilities from dementia, high blood pressure, diabetes, um, serious mental illness, traumatic brain injuries, stroke, breathing problems, and other severe health diagnoses, causing multiple manifestations. In a day program setting, CBAS centers provide similar services to what people receive in nursing facilities, in skilled nursing facilities. We also provide care and supervision to allow them to remain in their own home despite serious illnesses. CBAS services include transportation to and from their home, individualized assessment and care plan, nursing and health services, behavioral health intervention, coordination of health care, medication management, social services, therapeutic team-based activities, and a healthy meal, on top of receiving also physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy as needed. We offer these services in a personalized manner and in more than eight languages. There are currently 241 CBAS centers in California specializing in serving the medical population. CBAS, serve, CBAS participants are at risk to be placed in skilled nursing facilities because of their condition. CBAS costs around 9,000 annually per person. However, in a skilled nursing facility, it can cost as much as $83,000 per year. CBAS is one of the cost-efficient home and community-based services that support choices, community living, and a quality of life for people on medical, despite their limited financial resources and serious health condition. AB 1261 restores the CBAS program in state law. This will provide better program sustainability, 
and legislative oversight. It also reinstates the rate floor provision originally mentioned in the Darling versus Douglas settlement, <coughs> which required managed care to pay rates for CBAS services that are at least equivalent to a fee for service rate. Although this requirement was part of the original waiver, it was dropped by the state last November when the waiver was renewed. There are 55 centers that have closed since 2011 and closing more would mean that um, th there is loss infrastructure. Uh, the economy of California will weaken. So I would like you to please respectfully re um, vote an I vote for AB 1261. Thank you. Anyone else in support? Amber King with the Association of California Healthcare Districts in support. Thank you. Rebecca Gonzalez, National Association of Social Workers, California Chapter in support. Uh, Sean South on behalf of the California Primary Care Association in support. Fred Main on behalf of CalPACE in support. Thank you. Any opposition? Any questions for any of the members? Seeing no questions, is there a motion? Uh, moved by Senator Roth. Uh, I'm obviously supportive of the bill. I think it's a noble issue. And uh, would you like to close? Uh, I respectfully request your eye vote. Thank you. Item number nine, uh, AB 12. 61, do pass to appropriations. Call the members, please. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Wynn. Aye. Wynn, aye. Hall. Hall, aye. Mitchell. Aye. Mitchell, aye. Monning. Aye. Monning, aye. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, aye. Pan. Aye. Pan, aye. Roth. Aye. Roth, aye. Wolk. Aye. Wolk, aye. Aye. It has nine. That bill is out. Thank you. We're at the last item of the day, item number 10, AB 1299, Ridley Thomas, Medi-Cal Specialty Mental Health Services, Foster Children. Good afternoon, Assembly Member. Mr. Chairman, it's a pleasure to see you. I uh, join you, uh, Senators and Mr. Chair, to present AB 1299, which will require Department of Health Care Services to issue policy guidance that establishes the presumptive transfer of responsibility for providing mental health services for foster youth. I think this is an oversight in statute. Uh, this is a bill that seeks to provide quality mental health services for young people and who, uh, who are part of our most vulnerable population. I think all of us recognize that. Uh, with your indulgence, Mr. Chair, we have witnesses that can attest to the merits of the bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Assemblymember. Uh, please proceed. Mr. Chair, members, Carol Schroeder with the California Alliance of Child and Family Services. We are proud to co-sponsor AB 1299 with our partners, the Steinberg Institute and the Women's Policy Institute. The problem of providing foster children and youth placed out of county with behavioral health services they need and to which they are entitled has vexed California for over 20 years. As a result, foster children and youth placed across county lines often experience lengthy delays in accessing behavioral health services or are denied services altogether. To solve this problem, in 2007, we co-sponsored and former pro tem Daryl Steinberg authored SB 785. It instituted a host of voluntary procedural reforms to smooth access to services for foster children placed out of county. They have not worked. But 785 did something very important for former foster children who have been adopted or are living with family members in kin guardianship arrangements outside their counties of origin. It definitively established the county where the child is living as the county responsible for the provision of mental health services, and this has worked. We've taken the lessons we learned from that experience and incorporated them into AB 1299. This bill would have the Department of Health Care Services establish the presumptive transfer of responsibility for providing mental health services to foster youth placed out of county from his or her county of origin to the county where the youth is living. It also builds in the opportunity to develop and institute procedural guidance for making exceptions to presumptive transfer when that's in the best interest of the individual child. Finally, it would also ensure that funding for mental health services follows any foster child placed out of county by requiring the Department of Finance to use authority it already has to set or adjust its allocations, uh, so, I'm sorry, behavioral health subaccount allocations to fully reimburse counties during the fiscal year in which the services are provided. We respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Anyone else to support? Good afternoon. My name is uh, Manny Prosto. I'm a social worker as well as a parent that has provided permanency for a youth in foster care. 
Um, in my personal experience as a parent that provided a permanency, my son moved to my home um, at the age of 13 from a level 12 group home, um, had a lot of needs um, and barriers with mental health services. It took three and a half months before he was able to establish services because he wasn't out of county placement. As a social worker that's been doing this work for 17 years, I've seen many of times our youth languish um, when transferred out of county placements. And it's also a barrier to permanence when we find youth in care um, needing to be placed out of county um, because not the appropriate mental health services are in place. Oftentimes there's plenty of disruptions which result with our youth coming back into foster care system because a simple transfer of mental health services wasn't in place. I strongly urge your I vote for AB 1299. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Yes, uh, my name is Patrick Gardner. I'm the president of Young Minds Advocacy Project. I thank you for the opportunity um, to uh, support this uh, bill. A uh, couple quick points. First of all, um, to simplify this matter, it's simply a, an issue where um, children are um, transferred out of their home network of services. And as you all know, when somebody isn't in their network, for healthcare, they often have difficulties getting services. And the way that uh, California's mental health system is set up is that every county is its own, essentially, HMO. And so when a child crosses county lines, they're essentially out of network. The result of this has been that children not only often don't get services, but they often get much less intensity of care than they would if they remained within their uh, county in which they entered uh, the child welfare system. Yep. This uh, bill uh, went through the assembly without a, uh, a single uh, negative vote. Um, I understand that there have been some concerns raised by the counties. Uh, I think those concerns are um, not real issues, and I'll uh, enumerate them very quickly. Number one, there's concern about the use of the Department of Finance's uh, uh, author, uh, authority to allocate uh, behavioral health funds to the counties. Um, this bill doesn't address that authority. It already exists under SB 1020, and in fact, the Department of Finance has already, in the last two years, uh, exercised that authority to allocate the dollars to the counties. Um, so that's not an issue. Um, another concern that uh, people have raised is that there's a lot of money here because one in five foster youth are placed out of county. Um, the truth is that although many children uh, are in fact placed out of county. Um, uh, for each placing county, there's also a receiving county. And what we uh, learn when we take a careful look at how the system works is uh, one county will send children out, but it will also receive children in. And so the real financial impact is when there's a net difference. And to give you just a very quick flavor of how that works, if you look at group homes uh, data over the last couple uh, uh, well, the, the most recent data we have is from 2009. Um, it gives you a sense of LA County uh, uh, sent 65 kids um, out of county, but they served 68 kids from other counties. Uh, similarly, San Diego County, 31 kids were sent out of county, uh, but 29 kids were sent in. So the amount of money that we're actually dealing with is probably modest simply because the counties can um, uh, balance out their accounts and the net differences are going to be relatively modest. There is no known opposition support on both sides. I think you just raised more concerns that were ever thought of. And <coughs> so, okay. I, I you mean, talk your way out of it. I'm willing to hear it. Uh -huh. so, um, anyone else is speaking support? Uh, Anna Hasselblad with the Steinberg Institute. The Steinberg Institute is a proud co sponsor of AB uh, 1299 and urge your uh, I vote. Thank, Thank you. you. Rusty Salix, California Council of Community Mental Health Agencies and Support. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments from any of the members, any else, uh, anyone else in support? Uh, Sean South, on behalf of the California Primary Care Association and Support. Rebecca Gonzalez, National Association of Social Workers, California Chapter and Support. Shereen Walter, California State PTA, the Parent Teacher Association in strong support. So why it's CUM Health Access California in support. Good 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members. Farrah McDade Ting with the California State Association of Counties. We're pleased to report that we've been working with the bill sponsors and the author on some of our concerns, not necessarily centered around the money and a number of kids, um, but uh, the Department of Finance's authority. The uh, clarification, the Department of Finance has the authority to help direct uh, behavioral account growth funding, not the behavioral health realignment mental health sub account. Um, and further, uh, the Department of Social Services, the Department of Healthcare Services, along with the County Behavioral Health Directors Association and the County Welfare Directors Association have been working on a concept paper to um, uh, implement what this bill is attempting to do. We think that this bill is timely. We think that the, there is an issue that needs to be solved. Uh, we've been supportive of that process and that concept. It was presented to the Child Welfare Council two weeks ago um, and uh, accepted. There is a draft on the DHCS website, so we're moving forward with that. And again, we look forward to working with the author to move this bill forward in a way that we are able to uh, address the issue in a more timely manner. Thank you. Any questions for any of the members? We have a motion by Senator Roth. Uh, would you like to close? We respectfully request an I vote. This improves our mental health care delivery system for the state's most vulnerable uh, uh, residents. Thank you very much. We're at item number 10, AB 1299, due pass two, human services. Call the members. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Wynn. Aye. Wynn, aye. Hall. Mitchell. Aye. Mitchell, aye. Nielsen. Monning. Aye. Monning, aye. Nielsen. Aye. Nielsen, aye. Pan. Aye. Pan, aye. Roth. Roth I Wolk, Wolk I. Thank you all. Thanks, Senator. That currently has eight. That's enough to get out. We'll put that bill on call. Okay, we're going to now lift the call. We're going to. Yeah, we do start off with consent item, item number three, four, and 11. Uh, call the absent members. Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Currently has nine. Those bills are out. <clears throat> item number... Item number two, AB 389. Current vote count is 8-0. Call the absent members. Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. 9-0. Nine 9-0. Zero. Nine zero. Bill is out. Item number five, AB 847. Do pass appropriations, 8-0 current vote count. Call the absent member. Pan. Aye. Pan, aye. Current, current vote count, 9-0. The bill is out. Item number six, AB 858. Do pass to appropriations. Current vote count is 8-0. Call the absent members. Pan. Aye. Pan, aye. Current vote count, 9-0. The bill is out. Item number seven, AB 861, Manshine, current vote count 8-0. Call the absent members. Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Current vote count is 9-0. Vote That bill is out. Item number eight, AB 1231, Wood, uh, do pass as amended to appropriations. Current vote count 8-0. Call the absent members. Pan? Aye. Pan, aye. Current vote count is 9-0. That bill is out. Item number 10, AB 1299, do pass human services, current vote count 8-0. Call the absent members. Hall. Aye. Hall, aye. Current vote count is 9-0, to zero, and that bill is out. That concludes the business of the day, and we are adjourned.